Desmond O'Hare, the man most wanted by Irish police, was discharged from hospital last night. He'd been there for six weeks after a shootout with police and army officers. As bullet wounds healed, he was questioned today for 20 hours before being taken in the back of a police ambulance to the heavily guarded special criminal court here for what state prosecutors hoped would be a speedy remand to the top security prison at Port Leash. The army stood by outside as O'Hare was charged with kidnapping John O'Grady and maliciously wounding him with shooting at an army lieutenant and with the illegal possession of firearms. A slightly built, ordinary looking man, one finger bandaged, a bad limp. He had to be helped into the dock and remained seated throughout. The presiding judge twice adjourned the court after the state failed to produce evidence to show who'd actually had custody of O'Hare while he'd been in hospital and evidence to show he'd actually needed medical treatment. When the court reconvened at nine o'clock tonight, the Department of Public Prosecutions had replaced their solicitor with a barrister and armed themselves with two consultant surgeons who filled the embarrassing gap in the state's evidence to the judge's satisfaction. O'Hare was remanded in custody to Port Leash Prison. A provisional trial date was set for April the 12th. At 25 to 10, Desmond O'Hare, clearly visible this time in the back of the police van, left in a heavily armed convoy, which included three army vehicles, for the prison 55 miles away, where he would be held in a cell, well away from INLA prisoners there from other factions. Man, use at 10. Armed soldiers of the Irish Army deployed in front of a special criminal court today as the five accused men were driven in from Port Leach. O'Hare was seated in the back of a second police van between two Gardaí. With 400 possible witnesses, this trial was expected to be one of Ireland's longest, but after only an hour, all five men pleaded guilty to the main charges against them. O'Hare, the so-called Border Fox, answered guilty three times to unlawful imprisonment, malicious wounding and possession of a firearm. The prosecution said that O'Hare had been the leader of the gang, he'd instigated the kidnapping, and he'd personally cut off Mr. O'Grady's fingers. Detective Superintendent John Murphy said Mr. O'Grady had been gagged. Two pillars had been placed over his head, he'd been put on the ground, and while one man stood on his arm, another had cut off the top joints of his two little fingers. The wound had been cauterized with a hot instrument, and the pain, said the detective chief superintendent, had been excruciating. Later, counsel for O'Hare said several times that O'Hare sincerely regretted the injury to Mr. O'Grady. David Rose, ITN, Dublin. The five men arrived at Dublin Special Criminal Court today to face the longest sentences ever imposed by a judge in the Republic. Fergal Toll was given 20 years, and the whole kidnap gang and the man who sheltered them were given a total of 162 years imprisonment. Bearded Edward Hogan was given 40 years, 20 for the kidnap, plus 20 because he shot a guard at. And Desmond O'Hare also got 40 years, 20 for the kidnap, plus 20 because he chiseled off Mr. O'Grady's two little fingers to pressurize his family into paying a ransom. O'Hare made a number of threatening phone calls to the O'Grady family. RTE, the Irish Broadcasting Service, has obtained a recording of them. I just sent word to my man to chop off two of his fingers. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to chop them up in bits and pieces and send fresh lumps on them every fucking day if I don't get my, my money fast. O'Hare's mother was among the many relatives and friends who crowded the public gallery today to hear the presiding judge pass sentence. Mr. Justice Hamilton said the mutilation of Mr. O'Grady had introduced a new and frightening dimension to the kidnap. It would not be tolerated by a civilized society or by the court. Standing in the dock before he was sentenced, O'Hare made a long, often chilling statement to the court. May all my deeds reverberate, he said, until bloody war is waged against the Unionists and their southern allies. Neat in a grey suit and tie, he said, justice for the oppressed of Ireland can only come through the barrel of a gun. None of the accused showed any emotion as their long sentences were read out to them, but O'Hare gave a clenched fist salute as he was taken from the dock to begin his 40-year jail sentence. David Rose, News at 10, Dublin. The man who boasted he'd never be taken alive was stopped in a hail of bullets at this roadblock in County Kilkenny. The troops and guardies set up the checkpoint after a tip-off and sealed the area. The border fox approached the block at speed behind the wheel of a green BMW. About 50 shots were exchanged before the car swerved to a halt. O'Hare's passenger was dead. A wanted member of the INLA, he's been named as Martin Bryan. 
O'Hare himself was stuck behind the wheel of the car, despite being examined by forensic experts. He had been hit by bullets in his arms, legs and chest. A soldier manning the roadblock was hit in the knee but was not seriously injured. O'Hare was still conscious when he was taken out of the car. He was rushed to a nearby hospital where he underwent emergency surgery to remove the bullets. He said to be in a serious condition. Armed detectives sat by his bedside, troops and police drew a cordon around the hospital. Tonight he's being moved to a hospital in Dublin. Known as the Border Fox because of his skill in evading the security forces, Desi O'Hare was a teenage member of the IRA who boasted of making his first killing at the age of 16. The police want to question him about a total of 30 murders. It's alleged he took a leading part in the bloody internal feud in the INLA. He's also alleged to have been the gang leader in the brutal kidnapping of the wealthy Dublin dentist. He twice evaded capture by the security forces in a series of high-speed car chases and shootouts. The ransom demand by the gang was enforced by just two fingers from the dentist's hands. Only yesterday his wife was found in custody in Dublin on charges connected with the case. The O'Hare's small daughter was in court for the proceedings. In the Irish Parliament today, the Taoiseach Charles Hockey opened a debate on extradition, promising he meant to get tough on terrorists. The kidnapping of John O'Grady and the slaughter of Dennis Gillen bring the whole question of subversive threats to the security of this state into a new and urgent focus. They place renewed emphasis on the need to use all available means at our disposal, not just to combat terrorism and subversive activity, but also to demonstrate clearly and unequivocally to the world our condemnation of violence in all its ugly manifestations. Tonight, one of the four maze escapees picked up this week appeared in the High Court in Dublin. There was a mass of inquiries to be held under the circumstances surrounding the scene's arrest. His lawyers alleged the Gardaí illegally held him until his expedition warrant arrived. Two other maze escapees were also remanded in custody tonight as the T-shirt congratulated his security forces on the success of their six-day operation. David Chater, News at 10, in Dublin. Desi O'Hare is 20...